from the nation's capital, the Conservative Caucus presents Conservative Roundtable, an in-depth look at today's most important issues. Welcome to Conservative Roundtable. I'm Howard Phillips, chairman of the Conservative Caucus, which sponsors Conservative Roundtable. And uh, if you want to tell your friends and associates about the program and they're unable to watch it now, uh, be aware that uh, this program will be broadcast on YouTube and they can find it there. Our guest for this broadcast is a man who's been a leader in the cause for a number of years. Tom DeWeese is one of the nation's leading advocates of individual liberty, free enterprise, private property rights, personal privacy, back to basics education, and American independence. He's a native of Ohio where he has been a candidate for the legislature. He's been the editor of two newspapers and he's owned several businesses since the age of 23. Uh, he debated the issue of the UN before the Cambridge Union in England, the United Kingdom, and uh, he won the debate. And he's currently founder and president of the American Policy Center and editor of the DeWeese Report. Now, you have been almost unique in explaining to the American people the dangers of what is called sustainable development. What is sustainable development? Well, this comes from uh, the Earth Summit in 1992, the United Nations Earth Summit that was in Rio de Janeiro. Uh, there were several documents that came out of that, uh, that summit, and uh, one of them was called Agenda 21. Uh, this is a soft law document, meaning that it's not a treaty, but uh, it is a policy. It's a blueprint for what we, uh, what actually what Al Gore called the wrenching transformation of America away from the horrors of the 20th century industrial revolution. Uh, what it really is, is a blueprint for top-down control of, of every aspect of our lives. Uh, they, they use the environment as the excuse that, uh, you know, of course, we've heard many, many times with the whole global warming issue that uh, we only have one planet and so we've got yeah. to protect it no it, matter it, what. Environmentalism has replaced communism as the principal threat to American liberty. Well, it really came down to this uh, as, as the, uh, the communists tried and tried and tried through the Cold War and other uh, times to get us to give up our liberties to, uh, you know, to the wisdom of Karl Marx. Uh, Americans rejected that, didn't do it. Uh, they needed something to uh, get us to give up those liberties, uh, some, some major issue. They came up with environmental Armageddon. And uh, from that point forward, they got Americans throwing their liberties on the bonfire like a good old-fashioned book burning. And uh, that's what, uh, what sustainable development is. It's a blueprint on how to do that. And uh, uh, again, the, um, the logo of sustainable development uh, has what we call the three E's. You have interlocking circles mm -hmm. on your sustainable development brochure, mm -hmm. and those three E's are? Social equity, economic prosperity, and ecological integrity. Uh, breaking those down, you will find that sustainable development is, uh, uh, involves every aspect of your life. Uh, the social equity plan. How does it do that? So, well, uh, as, as you go through it, it's, it, a lot of people think it's just about conservation and development and, uh, you know, just, just about good uh, ideas in your community and how to develop it. But the social equity plank, particularly, is the most dangerous, the most effective of this. Uh, another term for social equity is social justice, a term coined by Karl Marx. And just to give you an example of what they mean by social justice, uh, it is a, according to sustainableist literature, it is a social injustice for a country to have borders. Does that sound familiar? <laughs> well, they've succeeded so far, yeah. haven't they? Well, we contend that every, every, almost every issue that we are fighting today, whether it's Obamacare, illegal immigration, uh, the Fed, on and on and on, has its roots going back to uh, Agenda 21 and sustainable development. And I mean, this is the, the, the blueprint on how they want to impose those, those ideas. It is, for example, a social injustice to own private property. Why? Because some people earn uh, profits from, uh, create wealth from private property, and not everybody does. So that's a social injustice. It's a social injustice to have bosses 
in uh, in a business. That it's, you know, and this is right out of the, I mean, when I was in college campuses fighting the Young Socialist Alliance, we had this debate with them about businesses that, that all the, the workers should uh, be the bosses. And I, and I thought it was nuts then. Now it's in it's sustainable like electing development. the leaders of a military unit bottom up instead of uh, top down. Sure. People don't know what they're doing. Nobody has a stake in it. Nobody cares uh, whether it's run or, you know, good or bad. And, uh, and that's what they have. So s social justice and social uh, equity uh, is, is the plank that affects every aspect of our lives. Uh, and the, uh, the economic prosperity plank uh, you hear today, everything is going green, going green. All these corporations are talking about going green. This is the economic prosperity plank of sustainable development. Uh, the root of that plank is a term called public-private partnerships. And uh, this, you, know, you have a lot, really a lot of organizations that ought to be fighting this policy that are supporting it because of that plank, because of public-private partnerships. They say it's free enterprise. It's a way that to go sounds in. Sounds like fascism to me. Well, it's right out of the Mussolini playbook. But they argue that it is uh, using the genius of the private sector, using the money of the private sector to help build infrastructure, keeps taxes down, keeps down the size of business or of, of government. Well, the fact of the matter is, uh, as you say, it's fascism, it's uh, uh, government-sanctioned monopolies. You have certain corporations that get uh, all kinds of perks, uh, you know, if they join the club. And that's why you have companies like uh, General Electric and Sylvania that uh, used their partnership with government to pass legislation to ban their own product, an incandescent light bulb. Mm. Why? Because they're selling that for 65 cents and they're selling these new uh, green bulbs for three bucks. This is how it works. This is what they do. Uh, the Trans-Texas Corridor was a public-private partnership. Uh, there were this guarantees. This is a component of the proposed North American Union. Yes, absolutely. And and uh, <clears throat> Centra was promised uh, return on That's its investment. The Spanish company. Mm -hmm. The Spanish company that was going to build it, and. Uh, uh, you know, they, they were promised, uh, they had non-compete clauses, uh, so even the state of Texas couldn't compete with it. This is the economic plank of sustainable development. It's not free enterprise. It's, as you say, it's fascism. And then, of course, ecological integrity is the, um, the excuse for it all. Uh, you know, we wouldn't listen to all the wisdom of Karl Marx in the Cold War. We rejected it. And the communists had to find a way for us to... Uh, to accept it. And what they came up with was environmental Armageddon. Uh, if we don't save the planet, we have nowhere to go, we're all going to die. And so all of these policies came together. And, and you know, cap and trade, global warming, uh, you've heard the term smart growth, all of these things are part of sustainable development. Who is there in the political arena, an elected official, who understands social equity, economic prosperity, ecological integrity as key components of sustainable development. Who is there who is heeding your warnings and uh, expressing concern and providing roadblocks to the implementation of this leftist environmentalist agenda? That is a very good question and the answer to that is nobody. We have, I, I work with some state legislators, we have them in our conferences, I know they know the issue, but there is not a single elected official at any level of government, from city council to Congress to president, that is using the term sustainable development. Is there is any this. U.S. Senator with whom you have spent time mm -hmm. briefing the man or woman about this issue? Well, we've, uh, you know, we're, we're actually now working more in the state legislatures and taking it to them, and, and we're beginning to make some progress on that. Uh, but yet, there is still not a single elected official who is uh, standing with us on well, this. Well, let's take uh, the Commonwealth of Virginia. There's an yeah. outstanding constitutional conservative by the name of Robert Marshall, Mm -hmm. who has provided leadership on many issues. Have you discussed yeah. this with Bob? I have not discussed it with him yet, but he is. we are. We were discussing just the other day that we're going to discuss it with him. Uh, he is open to this. He's he your best prospect, it. in my yeah. opinion. Yeah. Uh, this issue, I, I'm working with mm -hmm. some other people on it. Uh, there was a, a Tea Party rally in uh, Richmond uh, a few weeks back, yes. and one of my associates gave a presentation on this, and legislators' ears perked up. That got us a meeting just this week with uh, Attorney General Ken Cuccinelli. 
and uh, he's got all this information. Cuccinelli's a very good man, and if he uh, embraces the need to uh, attack this uh, problem of so-called sustainable development, you'll have a guy who's going to be going far. Yeah. He was looking at it as whether it was a con as a constitutional issue. Uh, it, it, you know, looking he at He is a the, constitutionalist. Yes, and, and the thing I'm impressed with him about is that he, as I heard him speak uh, just prior to that meeting with him, uh, really has a root understanding of property rights. Yeah. It's not just the usual superficial yeah. across the top. The, he understands This the is one of the best men in public life anywhere. Yeah. We have to take a break here, Tom. Please stay with us. We'll be back with Tom DeWeese giving us more insight into these crucially significant issues. Stay with us. You are a defender of liberty. You spoke out. You were heard in Congress. No. You marched. You created a new movement. You endured attacks. You see folks waving tea bags around. Now you can help to repeal the bill. Go to sendthemamessage.com. Print the pledge to repeal Obamacare. Send it to your representative, senators, and candidates to sign that they pledge to repeal the bill 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 now go to send them a message.com and help repeal the bill Hello, I'm Steve Forbes, chairman of Forbes Media, here to tell you, urge you, to watch Conservative Roundtable if you want to learn about the issues that matter and what you can do to get our country back on the right track. Welcome back. I'm here with Tom DeWeese. I'm Howard Phillips, chairman of the Conservative Caucus. Tom, you have written this, quote, the term sustainable development was born in the pages of, quote, Our Common Future, unquote, the official report of the 1987 United Nations World Commission on Environment and Development, authored by Gro Harlem Brundtland, vice president of the World Socialist Party. For the first time, the environment was tied to the tried and true socialist goals of international redistribution of wealth. What else can you tell us about the role being played by the United Nations in pushing sustainable development? Well, it's the center. Uh, what you have are thousands of uh, non-governmental organizations, NGOs, that meet under the auspices of the United Nations and they create documents and uh, those documents eventually make their way through the system to become treaties or in the case of Agenda 21, a soft law policy and uh, then you get uh, you know, these huge meetings with international leaders there, presidents and, and leaders of other countries, and they sign on to these documents, they accept them, and then uh, the other thing that happens, those, those NGOs working in each country know what's in those documents, know what the goal is, what the agenda is, and they begin working uh, in the Congress, in the legislatures, in the, in the local communities to uh, pressure and force these policies into place. If my memory is correct, John Bolton was at one point our ambassador to the UN. Uh, he's played a prominent role in the US foreign policy and Republican administrations. Have you ever been able to sit down with Bolton and explain these issues to him? I have not, no. I think he'd be a good target. He's now talking about running for the presidency. Excellent. And uh, uh, I'm not a neocon. I don't think we should be in Afghanistan or in other places where we've been misspending our defense dollars that should be spent on rebuilding our Navy and Air Force. But uh, he is uh, a good man in many ways. And I think if he fully understood this, because of his UN experience, 
uh, properly motivated, he could accomplish a good deal. Yeah. It, it is, as I said, it, it is something that is starting to catch on. I think because it's one of those kind of things that was creeping along underneath the uh, surface and people weren't aware of what it was. They are very clever in the way they word things. They're very careful to use existing uh, infrastructure that's there and just kind of usurp it for what they want to do. Uh, and people were caught unaware. Where we have been working over the last several years has been in the West, the ranchers, the farmers, the uh, timber industry, the mining industry. These folks knew what this was about and, and learned how to fight back. And, and uh, they were pushed against the wall. They had nowhere else to go. And so they've learned to push back. But um, uh, in the cities, it crept up and people really weren't aware of what was happening. And over the last year or so, that has changed. And now we're getting people to listen to us. So getting to uh, people who normally would not have listened to us, we now have a chance, I think, to get that done. Well, if you could get one of the Republican leaders in the House, uh, maybe the chairman of a committee or subcommittee, to embrace the issue, and share it with his colleagues, it could make a big difference. Yeah, and, and we're actually beginning to put pressure uh, as, as we can on uh, elected officials we've worked with uh, who still, as I said before, don't even use this term. And, and they always want to play a, a, you know, the word game. Uh, they'll call it something else. As soon as you do that, you've fallen into their trap. Yep. And uh, if we can get them to talk the about enemy. this. Euphemisms the Yeah. And, I mean, sustainable development is the biggest euphemism of them at all. What it really means is locked away resources. And uh, if we can get these elected officials uh, to start using the term sustainable development agenda 21 in a negative way, uh, then they will quit telling uh, so people will quit saying, I have a tinfoil hat on, that this is all a conspiracy theory, and they will begin to take it seriously and uh, I think we're getting close to that. Well there are there are some real conspiracies yep. <laughs> and uh, very few things happen by accident. Yep. Uh, now one of the questions you answer is what kind of political groups promote this internationally and you say at the top of the heap is the UN Environmental Program, UNEP, created in 1973 by the UN General Assembly this is the catalyst through which the global environmental agenda is implemented. Virtually all of the international environmental programs and policy changes that have occurred globally during the past three decades are the result of UNEP efforts. But the UNEP doesn't operate on its own, you say. Influencing it and helping to write policy are thousands of NGOs, non-governmental organizations. Yeah, and, and the one that is probably the most uh, dangerous in the United States right now is an organization called ICLE, the International Council for Local Environmental Initiatives. And uh, they helped write Agenda 21 back in 1992. They are an international NGO organization, and their job now is to go into communities uh, around the world, and particularly in the United States, over 600 American communities uh, are paying dues to ICLE. Is to there a particular person who is recognized as the leader of ICLE? Nope. They are just uh, down under the surface. It's not. Uh, it, it, it's it's just kind of hidden. But they they come into the community. The community pays them dues. They bring in. Uh, programs to the, the, the words they use, the, 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 the goal is to cut the carbon footprint of the community. It all goes back to global warming. Does George Soros have any role to play in any of this? Uh, he's, he's certainly funding a lot of this in the background, yeah. But, uh, but this organization, uh, your, your city council are paying dues to them, your tax dollars. They come in, they set up these programs, and uh, what happens then is they, they set up uh, non-elected boards, councils, regional governments. You will have councils on uh, historic preservation. You will have councils on water use, uh, you know, development in the community. And uh, you go to your city council saying, hey, this policy is affecting my property. City council sits there and looks at you with a stonewall blank look on their face and won't even respond to you. You have your two minutes, time's up, go. They don't even respond to you. Why? Because these councils, not elected to anyone, uh, not answerable to anyone, uh, are making these policies. And they're dictating now to city council once they've established them. This is the definition 
of a little Soviet. And as I've said uh, in, in some other things I've written, the Tea Party movement, the people who are out now in the streets who are protesting uh, the Fed, they're protesting Obamacare, they're protesting gun control, they're protesting uh, abortion, whatever the case may be, they cannot restore the republic while their community is being turned into a little Soviet. Well, this is what the Great Society was all about. That's what the community action agencies were. When I was director of OEO, uh, the agency, spending billions of dollars, uh, had 10,000 NGOs which uh, funded 500,000 full-time left-wing activists. The entire left-wing agenda was being subsidized by Lyndon Johnson's Great Society. One of the reasons I left the Republican Party in 1974 was because the Nixon administration not only failed to back me up in closing these things down, they actually doubled the money for them. And uh, so it's, it's not a Republican versus Democrat issue. <laughs> it's uh, a question of... Uh, the so-called conservatives uh, just living with the uh, agenda, the institutions of the radical left. What you, yeah, exactly right. What you have here, I mean, it's certainly not a left, or I mean, a, a Republican versus Democrat issue, because Republicans have helped push this issue more than the, than the Democrats had ever hoped could be done. And, uh, and George Bush was certainly a major proponent of this. And uh, what you have here is... Uh, a, 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 an entire agenda being put in place, and it, it's not just, uh, you know, in, through the federal government. It comes through the through the local communities, and so yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it's every uh, year we celebrate Constitution Day on September 17, mm -hmm. and we give out a an Andrew Jackson Champion of Liberty Award. Mm -hmm. This last year we gave it to Bob Marshall, and I know he's going to be receptive to your comments because his whole speech was about the importance of doing things at the local level and how you can change America by the right kinds of actions at the local level. Yeah, people keep asking us how do we how do we do something about this this taking over their uh, communities and, and the federal government and all that. We believe that uh, local action is the key to it. If you know what sustainable development is and you know that ICLEI and other organizations that are like them are uh, what they're doing in your community uh, it's not an easy thing to overthrow this, but at least if you begin to learn what it is, you can make some, some noise and, and put some pressure on and, and change it. Uh, there is, of course, the Tenth Amendment movement is the most exciting movement, I think, that's taken place in, in a long time, and, uh, and I think that's a key. Tenth, you, Tenth Amendment reserves mm -hmm. powers not specifically delegated to the federal government, uh, to the states mm -hmm. and the people. And you've got uh, people like Sheriff Richard Mack, who yep. is uh, teaching Very local sheriffs man. that they, yes. We're uh, having a meeting of our Constitution Party this weekend, and some people are promoting Mack as a possible presidential candidate. <laughs> we have to take a break here. Uh, we have uh, another segment where we're going to turn this over to Tom, and he's going to use uh, those uh, closing moments to share with you some additional ideas. Please stay with us. We'll be back very shortly. Hey, listen, this is the greatest thing. I want to tell you something. Something's happening in this country. And I want to tell you, look at look around my friends here. My friends here in Washington, come over here. See all these great people? <laughs> these great folks are here because they want to take the country back to the direction of the Founding Fathers and stop all this nonsense that's going on and stop this... Uh, you know, this uh, immersion into socialism, which is happening. We've got to stop it. And every day we're losing a little bit of our freedom. But the, the answer is that the, the, that the individual citizens can make a difference. They can walk through these houses of Congress. They can look, at, look their congressman in the eye and say, hey, vote this bill down. Get rid of it. we got a lot of work to do. And the, the first thing we have to do is get rid of the garbage and the attacks on our freedoms. This is it. So anyway, that's what these guys are doing here today to do. Yes. And uh, and I say all of you guys out there, where with the sound of my voice and the and the you know the visual that you that this great gentleman has created, get down here and do your do your uh, responsible citizenship by going and seeing your representatives and telling them, you know. 
what you want because this is this is your house. It's not their house. Yeah. Get in there and tell them what to do, and let's uh, let's begin cleaning this country up. Is a, a big yes. mess has been created in only a year's time, in nine months' time, really. A big mess we have to recover from. We got to start work. We got to throw some people out. So anyway, I love this country. I love you. Go do your job. Thank you. If you're interested in the kinds of issues we discuss on Conservative Roundtable, please be aware that our fax number is 703-281-4108. Send us your contact information, and without cost or obligation, we'll send you uh, information that I think you would find useful. Uh, you can contact Tom DeWeese by checking out the address shown on your screen right now. Tom, we have a couple of minutes left. What are your closing words? The uh, sustainable development is in every single community in America, uh, bar none, it's in one form or another. It is affecting your private property rights. It's affecting uh, your family. It's affecting your job. It's affecting your standard of living. Uh, it's driving up the cost of your energy. It's driving up uh, uh, cost of property and so forth. And so every American is being affected by it, and every American needs to understand it. Um, I mentioned to you the uh, map. Why don't and, you show uh, that map the, to our viewers? I think I think uh, we're going to put it on the screen. We have about a minute it, left. Yeah. But this map is a uh, was created by the uh, friend of mine, Dr. Michael Kaufman, to uh, when the Senate was ready to ratify the Biodiversity Treaty out of the UN, which also came out of the Earth Summit. And uh, this map shows uh, all this red area. It shows what America would look like if the Biodiversity Treaty had been ratified. Uh, all the red area is uh, no go for humans. No human activity at all. The yellow area is uh, very, very limited human activity. The little green area, if you can even see it, is where there's normal human and activity. And by the way, if people contact us at 703-281-4108 and ask for a copy of this map, we'll be happy to provide it to absolutely. them with your help. Sure, absolutely. But this, uh, this is what America will look like if sustainable development is put in place uh, across the boards, and this is what we're trying to stop. Tom, I thank you for a most informative interview, and uh, keep up the great work. And we'll thank do you for watching Conservative Roundtable.